Hi everyone, Kelly Mahler here, occupational therapist, and I want to talk about a frequently asked question that we hear, um, and that is how do you assess interoception? And that is a great question, and one that is widely debated right now in the interoception field. What is the best way to measure interoception or the interoceptive awareness. Uh, researchers are, are really working hard to figure this out. Um, there's not a general consensus right now. What we do know is that we have some existing methods of measuring interoception or interoceptive awareness. All of them have pros, all of them have flaws, um, So, but these tools can fit into three main categories. So we have um, category one is objective measures, and these are um, measures that aim to make a quantifiable measure of our inner experience. So for example, the heartbeat detection task is a widely used task by researchers where they hook a participant up to a heartbeat, a heartbeat monitor um, and they ask the participant to count their heartbeats within a certain duration of time, whether it's 30 seconds or 60 seconds. Um, and then the researchers compare how accurate that person was at counting their heartbeats to what the researchers saw on the heartbeat monitor. Um, and so if your number and what you counted closely matches what's on the heartbeat monitor, then you can be considered having um, higher levels of interoceptive awareness. Um, a second category of interoception measures are subjective measures or self-report measures. And as the name implies, these are measures such as questionnaires or interviews that seek to gain information from the person themselves and report and that person is reporting on what their inner experience is. So a pro of this is clearly that who knows best about your own inner experience is yourself, right? Um, and so whenever possible, when we're seeking information from my clients, we of course want them to be sharing as much as they can possibly share about their own inner experience. Um, and so these self-reports can be really helpful. The main drawback is that they're really not quantifiable. They can't really give you a solid number that's measurable, but they do give really qualitative, really great qualitative information. Um, and then the third category is uh, caregiver report or observation. Um, and so we use these reports for my clients that might not be at a point in time where they can reflect and tell us about what their inner experience is. So we're doing our best guess at, um, at trying to understand some of the outward things that we see them doing and, and thinking about that through an interoception lens. So for example, like if, um, if my client's having toileting accidents, seeing that through an interoception lens, considering could those toileting accidents be partly due to an underlying um, interoception piece. Um, so could my client be um, not noticing those body signals or misunderstanding those body signals, telling them when they need to go pee or poop or whatever it is. And so really looking at all of the observations that we see and thinking about them through an interoception lens to get try to get one step closer at to understanding the deep whys behind what it is that we um, see in our clients. So I think one of the biggest issues, there's a lot of issues here with inter, with the assessment of interoception. And the biggest one in my mind is that really there is no one good level of interoception. There's no right interoception and wrong interoce interoception. There's no typical interoception and atypical interoception. We all have unique inner experiences. What your body feels like when you're hungry is different than what my body feels like when I'm hungry. What your body feels like when you're anxious is different than what my body feels like when I'm anxious. And so we really can't, it, it really becomes a really hard thing to quantify and say, if you take this test and you score this score, it means you have great interoception, right? It's really becomes um, difficult to do that because that's not the way that our inner experience works. There's no right or wrong. We all need to be validating our clients' inner experiences. Um, and so I think that is what really it becomes tricky when we're thinking about assessment of interoception. Um, but that qualitative look into the inner experiences and really seeing some of the things that we might be observing and considering that there could be an interoception thing at play, um, that can be extremely 
extremely, extremely valuable. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot more about assessment and in, um, including some of the specific things that I currently use with my clients and how um, we are assessing their inner experience. And we're assessing it not to um, declare if they are on level or they're accurate or they're typical. We're assessing to try to better understand their experience so that we can support them in ways that are more meaningful to them. Um, and so we're going to be talking a lot more about this in an upcoming online course that I am giving. Um, and we can't wait to talk a lot more about assessment. Until next time.